Hello everyone, my name is Kavela Mohal and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited. I am with the number one, the wise, the wise man. Don't say that thing of yours again. The grown. Don't say that. <laughs> the wise man, the intelligent, the Death mature, Death the Death handsome. Mohale Mohale. What's honey. happening everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am with the magnificent. The fine mama, the I can't say that one on camera, <laughs> but <laughs> the pretty, uh, intelligent, the wise, smart, gentle, kind yes. one that y'all have on your screens, K A B E L O M O H A L E. Can you spell your name that quick? Yes, K A B E L O M O H A L E. She don't know how to spell this name, but anyway, yes, let's go. I'm really glad. I'm actually very glad that we're doing this. We tried yesterday and it, it was a complete fail. Yeah, it, it, let's just leave let's it there. Let's not go in. It didn't work. And even today, you know, challenges arise, guys. Every time Mohal and I want to do something together that's very purposeful. Yeah, it's yeah. almost as if there's there's something that we have to. Mm. You know, what, have you seen though no, the I've pattern? Seen it. No, I've seen and it. that's why today I was I've like, I'm a change. I'm a look good. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna let anything get in our way. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to show up. That's um, that song by Hillsong, Not Today. Not Today. Yeah. You, then not today. you don't mess with the wrong not ones, today. you know. Not today um, but we're mature ever. enough to then understand some patterns and um, see, no, this one, this one we're going to show up irrespective. Yeah. Um, we have uh, made a commitment and we've told ourselves that we're going to show up and so we are showing up. And here we are with the first video together of the year and we're going to you know, main, do a bit of a maintenance check. Uh, we're going to call it maintenance check for now. Um, yeah. So this segment of our YouTube channel is maintenance. Yeah, maintenance check. Maintenance. Yeah. So the last time, babe, people, I think the last time we were together and we we're having a conversation was on one of our dear friends' YouTube channel, The Max. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to The Max. Yeah. Hey, uh, congratulations on yes. that new bundle of joy, new <laughs> bundle of blessings, new bundle of miracles. Yes. Let's go. Um, so, you know, it was it was quite a vulnerable, especially to people, because we discovered for us, we were really sharing. There's so much we did not share that day. Yeah. Uh, but with the tons, the tons of um, responses from, from you guys saying you appreciate our vulnerability, we appreciate it. Yeah. I don't think we understood how vulnerable we were. I think to us, really, we, we were talking. We still think or thought that we were keeping a few things still <laughs> private, can't we? It was yeah, really yeah. deep. But I think what people appreciated, Khale, is the fact that we did not want to portray this picture-perfect um, couple. Yeah. You know, we were a bit real with where we were, um, and we were not afraid to say, mm, yeah, I mean, I think it's not only just people. I, I know, frankly, I just don't like uh, the aesthetics of things only. Like, I don't, I don't like things that, like, when we got married, I'm like, man, why didn't people talk about marriage in its full form? You know, and and this is not just to say marriage and the things you, the child challenges and trials of marriage, but marriage in its full form. Yeah. You know, like discovering now that the things that we go through are not unique to our marriage. And it's like, oh, oh my gosh, why isn't this full form of the picture yeah. uh, being portrayed uh, everywhere else in the world, in the church, work, uh, wherever you are. But so it's like the house looks good. It's a beautiful mansion, six bedrooms all in suit and everything is meticulous and detailed and yeah. it's just so aesthetically pleasing but the walls and the paint on the walls is cracky and nobody gets to see that the grass is really not cut properly and the pavement's got things growing out of it so this is why we're doing maintenance and frankly yeah. it wasn't just for i mean on that episode it wasn't just that um people were shocked like i was saying i am like I want people to be able to talk about the reality of things and not just have this aesthetically pleasing relationship on Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. Because truth of the matter is, there is none like that. Mm. You know, there is there is no relationship that's just always aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, 
Because here, here's the thing. We, we always hear that your ma- marriage is hard, marriage is challenging. We know that, but we don't get to talk about uh, days where you're like, actually, I'm out. We yeah. don't get to talk about um, the messy parts. And you know what? I think sometimes there's wisdom in that. There's wisdom in sometimes just having your own community where you get to share these things. Sometimes it can just be uh, a therapist where you can get to talk about the really deep, complex, uh, very messy parts of marriage. Uh, but I do believe um, that it's important, whether it be on this platform, which I believe personally knowing myself, there's certain things I will still not talk about. I believe it's just wisdom. I would rather talk to those who are really close to us because it's difficult navigating challenges in marriage, especially um, when you are number one uh, without running away from it, a public figure, or um, have a public platform. It's very, very difficult. And I believe in the past two years, that was one of the the big things that contributed to how difficult it was or how uncomfortable we were sharing certain parts of our struggles and the challenges because purely because of that, you know, I mean, one of the reasons for me, I mean, for me, I don't really care what you think. (laughs) You know why? Because the revelation of it is that once I realized that there is no relationship, whether it be marriage, whether it be friendship, whether it be siblingship, there is no relationship that's always aesthetically pleasing yeah. and perfect. So meaning that people do a really good job at hiding their flaws. So every single picture is perfect. Every video is perfect. But you don't really know and that, hey, behind that, like yesterday it didn't happen because we tried to shoot this yesterday and it didn't happen because we got on each other's nerves. And that's the reality of it. So we could have just continued shooting the video and posted it. You wouldn't have known that before we shot that video. Actually. We were actually on each other's nerves. Yeah. So instead of actually just saying, oh, let's shoot it, we are like, matter yeah. of fact, pack up this whole thing, let's go. Cut it. So knowing that there is no relationship that is perfect. Also, it's not to just say, be afraid of marriage. Like marriage is hard. Marriage is hard, but marriage is also beautiful. But yeah. there is no marriage that is perfect. Then it's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, my marriage ain't great. My marriage ain't perfect. I don't care what you think of it. Why? Yeah. Because yours don't, isn't always on high. Yeah. Your friendships are not always on high. Yeah. So if that was the case, if your relationship was the personification of Jesus Christ's perfection, hey. 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 then I would hide mine because I know there's something that, that there's, there's a perfect idea and a perfect actual relationship, you know? But since there isn't any, why hide it? Because then the beauty about me being honest is that it makes you feel free enough to be honest about your position yeah. and actually have conversations that you would have never had. Yeah. And yeah, I guess yeah. that's it, just, that's why I'm like, I frankly don't. I, you don't care. <laughs> I care, but I don't care that much. I care more <laughs> about you yeah. having the truth and me being honest to myself yeah. and my marriage and my spouse and where I am as a man instead yeah. of putting up a facade. Yeah, I think what matters most is what you think about your marriage, to be honest, um, and then working on it. And, and not just what you think about your marriage, but also what your spouse thinks. Um, so, yeah, today I wanted us to talk about honor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's quite a tough, a challenging conversation, but very necessary. Yeah. I say this because one thing, number one, my husband really, when it comes to honor, it is a topic he enjoys learning or being a student of yeah. the topic of honor, but also number two, he desires honor. Um, yeah. And I believe every man does. In fact, even women desire to be honored. Um, and number three, I believe that it is a topic that is uh, necessary. Um, and I know that he's so good at talking about the topic. He's, he's been I reading no books. Pressure. No pressure. But he's, he's, he, <laughs> look, you've received some form of information that has I added know. a lot of value. He's read... I think you're on your second or third book when it comes to the topic of honor. Um, so you're equipping yourself. He's studying, and in the process, he's also teaching um, me. You know, so he'll be reading, and he loves reading in the toilet. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's the first thing I do in the morning. If you yeah. ask me what my routine in the morning is, that I wake up and I, before I touch my phone, I go to the toilet seat, put my big booty down, and then I oh, take the book fine. out. It's called Honor's Reward. I've been reading it for the past years, yeah, by, mean, over a year, by, by John Bevere. Mm-hmm. And I read a page or two of it, and I always leave, like, changed. It's the first thing I take in in the morning. 
But yeah. frankly, I actually haven't been doing that in the past week or two. The weeks. past two weeks, yeah. yeah. Your schedule has changed a little, but I think you're going back. I've been watching. Going back to what? Going back to six o'clock. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah six a.m. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I wake up at five, and he used. To, well, I used to wake up later. Yeah. Like, yo, it, yeah, it was quite difficult. But I'm um, going back to you know in, um, being intentional again about my health. She wakes up at five, and then in the living room, you just hear rabra katabaso. Elama kataba sondolobo Jesus, you're like, hey, and hey, Micah, your mama, you you growing up in that family <laughs> where your mama is praying so loud, you better wake up at five too. And any, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I, what I was saying is, I I also had a conversation with um, an amazing lady this week, and we were just talking about honor in in not just in the realm of friendship, but in general. We spoke about how, yes, uh, love is important. It is, it's important to be established in love within um, the sphere of friendship. But I believe that there's something that goes a, ahead of honor or that is built on, on, sorry, ahead of love and is built on love, um, on honor, sorry. And mm -hmm. that is love and value. Yeah, that, that is love and value. Yeah. So we were just talking about how I don't mention her because I didn't get a time I didn't get a chance to actually text her, but I know that I know you're good. I know you're good with, with me. I'm not going in detail, but it was very powerful what we spoke about, and we shared how in friendship sometimes you can love someone, but your actions are not a reflection of you honoring them and valuing them. Yeah. And so we spoke about how important it is that yes, love. But from love should be birthed honor and value. We should see the fruit of, of your love for someone by how you honor and value them. Mm. Those are important in relationships. And I don't think it's just in friendships, but I believe it should be in marriage as well, which is something that I, I know you will agree with mm -hmm. uh, because you, you know I love you, but I haven't always been the best in showing honor and value. Yeah, and it becomes... It becomes uh, tricky for men sp specifically because for me it's not your words that matter right so yeah. and that's why I guess men and women have a different love uh, language not love language but a love language meaning the way we uh, receive love and give like love. for men it's honor respect like and when you when I actually read it in the amplification when it says about yeah, and, and amplifying Amplified version. Amplified Amplify. version, yeah. Yeah, I forgot what the verse is. But then, <clears throat> I think it's talking about submission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, submission. Um, that honor, the, that part it, in, in the Amplified, I think it's basically saying to be seen, to be heard, to be mm. uh, recognized, acknowledged, praised, like celebrated. That's honor for me. Yeah. And that's what love is for, for me. You. As a man and for women, then it's um, safety, protection, provision. So those are the languages for you guys. That any woman, love, safety has a lot to do with love for women. I exactly. need to. Yeah, I I get what you're saying. Exactly. Uh, safety is is number one. Safety is right at the top there. So if you don't have safety, no matter how much I tell you I love you. Yeah. If I don't feel safe, you are not to going believe. to feel love. Yeah. So if you say to me. You love me, but don't honor me. Yeah. No matter how many times you say it, no matter how many times you may wash the dishes or may you... Because sometimes I, washing the dishes and the laundry is an honor. Yeah. Just, just so we know, like bringing your plate, a plate of food or making a meal isn't necessarily honor. Like <laughs> how many people serve at church, but they don't really honor the man who is actually the head of that church? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But... Um, I don't want to go into the detail of what it really is, but just just putting it out there. Yeah. Just putting. I it was out. actually wanting to look for it, but um, I can't find it, uh, so I'll just leave it. But I know what's that pastor's name again, babe, uh, who talks a lot about marriage. All of them. Oh, man. The ones that are married. All of I, them. I I we will put it in the description below. I think it's they. Yeah, man. Uh, their podcast is so good. So good when it comes to you wanting to prepare for marriage if you are single or if you are married and you want to understand um, the needs of a man in marriage and the needs of a woman in marriage. Oh, no, 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 we just had them now at church. 
Yeah, but those are the ones from Pastor uh, uh, Kingsley? Kingsley and uh, Mildred. Mildred. Pastor Mildred and Kingsley. But the, the ones from the US, babe. The ones we used to love watching. From the XO Ministry? Yes, uh, XO Ministry. XO, XO something. Um, but their one. ministry is amazing. Amazing when it comes to, I, I thought I still had it. Yeah. Amazing when it comes to um, love and uh, marriage and finding out the basic needs of a man in marriage and of a woman in marriage. And obviously for men, they talk about respect being number one uh, versus a woman is security, which is number one. Like, I, I need to feel secure um, in, in marriage. So one of the things that you, you, you taught me um, but I guess that's honor when it comes to gifts. Because you mentioned that, um, sorry, you mentioned, what, what, what was it about? Was it honor? And was it gifts? That God could give us gifts. You were reading it, that God gives us gifts. You like, you like that. She keep telling them the same part of the story of the book on that specific day when I read it to her after my nice sitting. Um, it's about gifts. Oh, that sorry. God, I thought honor. God, I don't know why I thought honor. It wasn't honor. about honor, but it was about gifts because it was touching that to say uh, the gifts of the Lord are without repentance. Mm -hmm. And even the most talented, gifted people that don't serve the Lord are incredibly successful and gifted in those departments that God has gifted them in, um, regardless of whether they serve God with it or not, because the gifts that God give will forever continuously produce fruit. And they will forever make you, they'll be successful. God's gifts are successful, period. They are fruitful, period. Yeah. Regardless of how you use them. So you find yeah. somebody who's an incredible singer and they sing on the Lucifer's team, but they're successful. Why? Because the gift, the one who gave the gift cannot give you something that fails. <laughs> it's always going to win. It's always win, 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 win. Win, 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 win. Now, I want, I want Pretty Ugly's one. Oh. See, I'm cruising, but I'm moving often. Win. <laughs> yeah, so they, you owe the gifts. Yeah. The gifts are without repentance, and the gifts are always going to do what the giver <laughs> of those say, gifts yeah. <laughs> are intended for the gifts to do, regardless of which direction you use yeah. and those gifts in. Yeah, you said gift. Quite a, quite a lot. Gifts, 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 gifts. Yeah. When so, babe, um, I feel like I'm in a 21 question kind of. No, it's because you're not you're, you're not asking me questions, and I know that you've got a lot to uh, to. to no, add keep asking. I'll bring. When it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to honor, um, do you think God requires that we honor everyone, um, or is honor just for a select few? Uh, and when I say everyone, I mean even the people that come at you sideways, even the people, you know, that do not honor you. Um, yeah. See, another thing I'm learning in this book is the mere fact that the moment uh, somebody is dishonoring to you and you take it upon yourself to actually get at them, you remove God uh, in the position of actually being the one that handles them. So the scripture that so says then, he is the God who, who he will... Bring venge vengeance. Yeah. Vengeance so, is so his. So the moment somebody does something to you that is dishonoring, and you do an eye for an eye type of thing, you're like, all right, cool. You won't roll like that. I'll catch you after school or outside. Then God's no longer in position to actually bring his justice or his judgment towards that person because you've taken it upon yourself to sit on the throne where God should be sitting in that situation and handling it the way God knows best and which is so far beyond what you could actually do with that situation. So in terms of do we honor everybody? Yeah, definitely. We, we are, it's like the same thing between marriage and, 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 and a man and a woman. They say, man, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Woman, submit to your husband as the bride, as the church submits to Christ, right? Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter what your spouse does. Yeah. All that matters is that that's the instruction yeah. That you, as a spouse, have been given unto. Does your spouse love you greatly? No, they may fail. They may have all the flaws. But still, you're required yeah. to love. You're required to submit. So as Christians, we are also required to honor. And you may be like, oh, but the authority in place is not honorable. You are called to honor, regardless. Because if God is be the one that puts people in position of authority, 
then God's the one that handles with the position, handles the people who are in authority. Yeah. Same thing with David. And was it Saul? Saul? Saul. Come on, Cindy, where's David and Saul, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, David had an ample amount of times where he could have took Saul's life. Yeah. But he had to let God deal with Saul and honor Saul still. That man was playing him an instrument. I don't know what he was playing. That instrument he was playing for him. And I could tell you, man, <laughs> this demons in Saul were trembling. And he threw a spear at David. Come on, somebody. Man and who David reads was the like, Bible. All right, cool. Since you are going to act a fool, I'm going to let you act a fool. But I'm going to act right. Come on. Mm. I'm going to let God deal with you. He came looking for David. He had his back turned against David. David just cut the corner of his, uh, you know, Gucci or whatever Louis that he was wearing, and to show him that I was in position where I could take your life. Sure. But because I'm required to honor you, even though I am appointed to be the next king, yeah. you are still the king now. So in, in Ratch translation, don't come for me. I can do it, but, yeah. I, but I won't. Yeah, and, 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 and be, the reason why he's not doing it is because of the one who has anointed him and called him the standard he's required him to live on goes beyond the standard of the world, which was like, ah, oh, bro, they did that to you, you got to get back at them. Okay, they sure. robbed you, you got to get back at them. Or they took your girl, you got to take their girl. They yeah. took your man, they took your car, they took this, or they hurt you. It's always, it's a repetitive cycle that actually doesn't lead to freedom, they but more bondage. It's all sideways, and, and you've got to clap back. And, and the beautiful thing about honoring in a position where you're being dishonored is that it's hard. But then yeah. the, the thing is that that's, the tru that's truly what iron sharpening iron is. Sure. It's, it's the things of God, the, the word of God is iron too, and, and it continuously will sharpen you. It says honor where you are dishonored. That's sharpening. Yeah. It's easy for me to dishonor you when you dishonor me. It is easy. It's Try. like it's easy for me to love you when you love me. Yeah, I'm trying to love my wife right now, man. <laughs> and only God can get me to love my wife. There's stuff about me to love. Yeah, there's so much things about you to love. Like, you are very lovable. And at the same time, <laughs> you are very much getting under my skin. <laughs> and I believe it's vice versa. So, yeah. So, I, yeah. I'm, I'm actually reminded of with everything that you're saying. I'm reminded of um, something that uh, our spiritual mom once said when she said submission is power under control. Yep. And you were talking about David. David knew the power that he had, but he was submitted to Saul. Yeah. And therefore, he, he withheld his power. Yeah. He showed him when he stripped that Louis bag that you're talking about or that whatever yeah. that thing is. That, um, that purple that, robe. That, A, I can. Yeah. But I won't because I'm submitted, yeah. right? And he honors his position of being submitted. Um, and I think it, it, it's, it's big when we bring it into the context of marriage. And look, I'm, I don't have it right yet. I don't. Who does? But we thank Holy Spirit for that revelation. Number one, mm. um, God has instructed women to submit to their husbands, right? Look, when, we get, when, I, when I get to meet God... <laughs> He's not going to ask me, did, did you do? feel Mukhale was deserving of your submission? Oh, no, he wasn't. He did A, B, and C. Therefore, ah, no, my daughter, I understand. He was not deserving. It's okay. No. The thing is, the order or, or the encouragement or the counsel, I love to say, the counsel and the instruction of God to me is submit. Does it mean that it will be easy? No, and that's why we have Holy Spirit, who is our greatest helper, who will help us in submitting to our spouses. Also, submission, um, and I want to ask you that question, babe. Do you believe that submission is subjective? When I say subjective, I mean it looks different in, 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 main, in different households. For some people, um, a man might say, when you cook for me, when you do this, when you, you're submitting to me. Um, but I know that you don't see it that way. So I want to ask you, but I, I just want to finish, so keep that in your mind. Okay. Um, but that's something that the Holy Spirit is teaching me as a, as a woman because I've opened myself to asking, God, um, how have you called me to be a wife to Mukhale? And I say a wife to Mukhale because it does look different. Here's the thing. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom in how to be uh, how to help our spouses. Our spouses are all called to different purposes. They're all positioned differently. And therefore, when we are helping uh, uh, and we, when we are wifing, uh, um, the, the core looks different. 
I don't know if I'm. Do you get what I mean? Like, if I am there to to help my husband, let's say you were a doctor. How we do things is very much different to another wife who's called to a man who is in ministry. I'm just giving an example. Yeah, you see. The honor stays the same. It doesn't change. But what I'm saying is how we do things in the house and how I show up as a wife is different. Well, I, I hear what you say. I know you hear what I'm saying, and maybe I need to articulate and, and no, give more examples. Even, even, even if you gave more so examples. So no one runs with something I'm not saying. No, I get what you're saying. And if they run with what you ain't saying, you ain't say it. So they can run with something you ain't saying. But anyway, I'm, 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 I, I once did this video on love to say the mere fact that we think we could define love is exactly why we don't have love, but so much hatred covered and disguised as love. Okay. See, um, the problem with us humans is that we want to define things that we were not actually orchestrators or, or creators of. A painting or an art piece only makes sense when the artist defines it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if God be art or if, if God be love, only God can define what love is. What love is. Mm -hmm. if, and, and, and I mean, in this, in this situation, I look at how Christ modeled submission. Yeah. Christ modeled submission for us because he's the ultimate definition of what submitted means. Yeah. He's the only person who I've seen perfectly submit yeah. and love, mm. like both hand in hand. So meaning that there is a level of us, even as a man, where I need to submit and love, yeah. love and submit. So it's like there's a definition of what submission needs to be like. And when I look at how Christ submitted to the Father, that means that's the ultimate expression of what we need to do. Yeah. That's, that's the perfect example of what I need to follow. I look at him to know how to submit myself to the Father. Mm -hmm. Not your will, Lord. Not my will, Lord, but your will. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and even when he did everything on earth, he said, I do everything that my father tells me to do. Yes. He never moved outside of instruction. Yes. Hey, look. Man, you know when you preach and you just be like, I preach real good. Christ never moved outside of instruction. I'm preaching real good right now. Oh, oh man. I might just take the offering basket out here. Uh, he, 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 he was the ultimate uh, representative or expression of submission. So, he never moved outside of instruction. That's the, that's, that's the thing where I'm like, yeah, now we live in a time where we hear the Bible say, wife submit, men uh, uh, love your wives. And then we so quickly to run to our own definitions and yeah. the whole idea of like, that's why I'm like love languages. Yeah, I get the whole idea of love language. I ain't bashing the whole idea of love languages, but I'm like, I've just realized that it's like the whole thing of introvert, extrovert. I'm like, I'm such a diverse human being that I cannot be defined because I bear the image of God. And if anybody could define the image of God, or anybody can define God, that person ain't never met God. In his fullness. In his fullness, yes. You can't define God in his fullness. I can't define myself in my fullness because the guy I was yesterday and what I thought like ain't the guy I am today. And I want so, you to maybe give context. I want um, him to. I want you to give context when you're done. I'll give the context. It's fine. Okay. So it's a thing of like there's certain things where I'm like I'm not trying to define it for myself in case my own definition actually limits me, mm. right? Mm. And it could even be it could even be a right definition, mm. but then it's limiting and it's limiting God's flow in my life because I've mm. defined this. Like this. If I define love a specific way, I could never actually tap into the ultimate definition sure. of what love is because then now I'm being I'm stopping myself from encountering encounter. love in its truest form. Because when mm -hmm. I encounter God's love, then it strips me away sure. mm -hmm. of every idea I have and it's it's like refinery. It's 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 it centrifies. Yeah. You can't you can't it's not one sided. You know, it's it's full. It's 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 everything, and 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 it's the kind of love that will send you into the wilderness for forty days and forty nights, mm. uh, and it's also the kind of love that would have you walking on water. It's the kind of love that will send you to a grave and raise you up in the third day. Yeah. It's 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 
if I was to, if you send me to jail or to the grave for three days and raise me up on the third, on the third day, like <laughs> it's the kind of love that takes a father and a son up to a mountain and say, kill your son. Yeah. I'm yeah. not killing Micah for nothing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but then if I don't actually follow the instructions that of what love truly is or the definition of what true love is, then I would never actually experience the lamb. The, 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 what is that thing? The saving grace or the, what did he give? Uh, Ooh, the bush and the ram. Yeah, I never get to experience the bush and the ram. I the ram in the bush. The ram in the bush. And, you know, the provision, <laughs> the, 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 that thing. Can the bush imagine? in the ram. The ram bush. in the bush. I mean, <laughs> <The bush in there. laughs> we cut that. Ah, you know what I'm saying? That's so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Your own, our own definitions of things God needs to define is limiting us to truly experiencing the beauty of the artist's work. Yes. I wanted to give context when you're talking about introvert, extrovert, because not everyone um, knows. And the episode, obviously, of Be Connects is probably not out by then, where we got to speak about it. But we were having a conversation with... Um, she and her husband are now, yeah, well, they're officially dear friends, so we can call them friends. I'm very, oh yeah, she's uh. doing the dance <laughs> in the background. <laughs> um, Incredible but, people. Absolutely brilliant people. So we were having a conversation about um, introverts and extroverts, and how the conversation came about was, now we are um, at their place, and we are noticing, in fact, um, myself and her husband are noticing that we are the only ones who are quiet. Mokhale and my friend, like, they are both, like, they have been We're talking. Here. Like, they are here. As you can tell, I am here. I was on my phone. I left my phone. I ordered food for us. They, they were still here, you know? Um, I asked what they want. They were really not interested as long as I just got food. Because they the were just here. Yeah. was feeding. Right? And we noticed Uguti shy. Um, I think there was a comment that was said in the room, Guti, oh, those are the extroverts. We are the introverts, yeah. right? But then we, we, we dissected that conversation a little. And um, it was posed in the room that, hey, what if we sometimes hide behind personality types? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll elaborate on that. Because it's in that room that I discovered that, oh, my gosh, maybe I'm not necessarily 100% an introvert because I associated myself um, as an introvert for a very long time, but it's in that room that babe I discovered that maybe I'm not full on introverted because I'll be an introvert with other people, but with those who are very close to me, I am not that much of an I'll introvert, speed. right? No, I'm not actually. Oh, no, you know I'm not. I know. I'll speed. You know, Maria, I'm more open. I try, yeah. yeah. But then we discovered that sometimes our... Um, traumas or our wounds or our hurts cause us to then um, protect ourselves and part of the protecting ourselves is by, is by identifying ourselves as, oh, I'm an introvert. Why? Because it doesn't challenge you to then step up and um, engage with others. Therefore, you hide behind this personality type of being an introvert. And that was me for a very long time. I was comfortable with not in, you know, engaging with others, not meeting new friends, not stepping up and showing up, um, basically hiding because, hey, I'm an introvert, so yeah. I don't need to. It doesn't challenge me to have to. And there's a flip side to it. There are others who uh, identify as I'm an extrovert, but the energy, the show, showing up and being loud and smiling and laughing all the time is masking, facade. it's a facade, masking the very things that are happening on the inside of them. And a friend, uh, I was actually having a conversation with her and she said, and that's why you find a lot of people who end up committing that word. The happiest people. Are, are like the happy, they smile, they're like, they are the happiest the outside. Yeah, are like the happiest people. And so I think it was very important for us to have that conversation because then you can introspect. You can look at yourself and question, wait, am I really an introvert? Or maybe I'm just uh, covering myself or protecting or preserving myself mm -hmm. so that I don't get to step out and trust again and love again and believe that there are others who can love me and receive me well again. True. So that's just the context for you to understand when he was speaking about introvert, extrovert, and how limiting... Oh, yeah. And, and how limiting they can it, be. It's, it's very limiting because, like, I've just learned that, um, I mean, many people will be like, I'm an extrovert. That's what you, you define me as. I don't define myself as that. Because I'm like, I was saying, I have so many moments where I want quiet. quiet. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
soon as it gets dark, she knows. If her phone makes a noise, like I get, like I get. Oh, in the morning. It, in mornings, Just when we and it's up. like, no, I need silence. Yeah. Does that mean I'm an ex introvert? No. Does that mean, like, oh, it's just like, no. So I've just learned that I don't define myself with moments in my life. Because then if I'm really an image bearer, if I'm in the image of God, and I've realized I cannot fully define God because every day I see an expression of God that is like, wow, to the brain, to the soul, to the heart. And then I'm like, okay, I'm in this image. I want God to fully express who I am, and I want to discover who that is on a daily. The moment I define myself as something, it limits me from actually even trying to discover more. more because the moment you shock. say, hey, can you actually get on a plane and jump off the plane? I'm like, no, I'm afraid of heights. Mm. You, you know, there's a parachute that catches you. There's somebody on your back. That's, do you know the experience that you would actually... Uh, <laughs> Jai. Kami gets again. Needles. Pins and needles. Pin and needle. Okay. You feel like pin and needle. No, baby, I feel like pin and needle. No, it's fine. Don't worry. Continue. Um, so I'm like, you missed the whole experience of being in the clouds, jumping off a plane, looking at the earth, the breeze hitting your face, learning something new about yourself, tapping into a mindset and a brain. Um, what is it? brain waves that you never actually thought you could have but you you miss a moment of discovery yeah. of who you could truly be yeah right because you have now just accepted certain definitions that sometimes the world gives you absolutely right i mean one of the one of my favorite thing that uh, a guy once said that i grew up with he's like bro you just never fit in because mm. we grew up primary high school it's like we met the one time now recently last year and he's like you just never fit in like even now you don't fit in and i said that's the beauty of it yeah imagine i fit in you wouldn't have this right now like you like I, you wouldn't have you would i enjoy me you wouldn't enjoy me if i only fit in and i never discovered more of me and because i enjoy me i express myself in a way you enjoy me and sometimes I may not be your cup of tea, I could be your coffee, but it's cool, like, <laughs> like you know. And, and I've, I've just learned that definitions limiting, they are. Um, they help sometimes bring context and understanding and give language to certain things, yeah, but they, they can be very, very limiting. The only definitions I do rock with, though, is that I am male, I am man. That, I rock with. <laughs> That's um, a definition I rock. I'm man. Yeah. <laughs> I got something between my legs. Oh my gosh. And my soul is man. I that I rock with that definition. You got a muscle. Um anyway, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I hope you define yourself as woman. Because yeah, female. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> because I, I only rock with woman. Babe, listen to me. <laughs> Um, this is maintenance, and I don't know <laughs> oh, how yeah, we yeah, got yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how we got here, um, but I, I'm looking forward to having a lot more conversations. And the reason why I even mentioned the last podcast, <laughs> um, yeah, even though the, the reason why I mentioned the last podcast we were on was um, to let you guys know that, um, you know, we are definitely on a journey of getting better. It's not the way it was before. Mm -hmm. um, it is not easy. I, <laughs> I once explained, I once explained to, um, I think, I, I don't know who I was explaining to and I said, um, it's as if <clears throat> that day in Cape Town when we walked into the therapist's um, counseling room, he counseled us, he counseled us, we confessed, um, you know, we, we repented. He prayed for us. We walked out saying, what on earth was that? It felt as though there was this veil and this heaviness that was removed from us. And now all the intentions and the effort we were trying to put before that were just not working because we found ourselves in the same cycle, trying, putting in effort, praying, 
trusting God, etc. But we would go right back to the same cycle. It's almost as if that prayer really um, removed something, uh, d- demolished something in the spirit, cut something in the spirit. Um, you know, there was a deliverance um, for us. And now some of the efforts that we were putting before are, are, are working. It's not easy. It is a process. Um, but I, I, I genuinely feel like there's momentum. You know, it's not a cycle anymore. It's now like, it's more like that, not the cycle. I almost said something, but I'm not going to say it. Um, am, am I right in yeah, saying that? Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I, and I think I was listening to the conversation earlier that you were having. Why is it getting dark in the room? Oh, my gosh. I'm messing with my lighting. Anyway, I was listening to the conversation you are having earlier on about... Um, the scripture that talks about when I am weak, he is strong, mm. right? And I think I think I was like, okay, if I have to remember certain moments, because also just the definition of weak is like, weak for me in that context, I almost think it means, this is my opinion, I almost think it means you're emptier. Like when you have, when you are empty of all the things that you are trying to do, when you have nothing to crutch on, when you have tried all things that you could possibly do, mm-hmm. and now you're empty, you're weak, then he could be made strong because mm-hmm. only when I'm empty, then could I be able to be filled by Christ and then strengthens, then he's strong within me. Yeah. Because he's the only way out. He's the only life I could go on to. He's the only truth I could lean on to. So I'm like, that was a moment where weakness occurred. And then his strength. There was an exchange of our yeah, weakness. It was like an strength. embracing of, yeah. hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like as a papa in this department, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I... That when you reach that moment of I could see you, yeah, then I feel like that's when he can be made stronger because as long as I keep thinking I know I what know I'm doing, all. yeah, then he could not be made strong within me because then he's not going to force to try and show that his way is better. Yeah, and and one of the things that I'm really loving about this journey is um, how uh, our family, um, you know. Uh, our sisters and our brothers have come alongside us. Yeah, right? they listen it, to all the venting. It has the not. Cussing, it has the, not been easy, and especially for zonky, me, no. it's so weird because I'm discovering that um, I had this war, and I thought it was just a war um, towards friends, but I did not know how I was not vulnerable even to my own sisters. And so this felt like an exposure where we would talk and where they would see the messy parts. It felt like there was a part of me that that was exposed and I wanted to quickly hide. Um, I was embarrassed about some of the things that I was going through and we were going through. Um, And so it made me want to hide. It made me want to avoid. But I'm learning more and more how embracing they are, how they are there for me. Um, how they can correct me when it comes to my behavior towards him, but also correct him when it comes to his behavior towards me. You know, there was a time when I felt like, ah, why does it seem like it, it felt as though we were going back to, to default? And my sister, both of them actually said, you are on a journey of um, getting out of the old. And um, I, I don't know, I can't remember how she phrased it, but she phrased it so beautifully. She said, it's, it's not going to be easy. It should not be easy because you're, you're on a journey of healing and um, rebuilding the foundation. And it's not, going to be, it's not going to be easy. So yes, you're going to butt heads. Yes, mm-hmm. you, 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 you're not going to always see eye to eye. Yes, you're going to be. She hates me using the word triggered all the time because she feels like I use it all the time. But I'll just, I'll just use the, that word for, just for now. Bear with me. And I know she's, she's going to be listening to this, both of them. If, you said, if we got paid me. for every time you said trigger, we'd be rich. You're lying. Like rich, rich. That's a lie. Like wealthy rich. <laughs> that's, that's, nah, that's not true. That's not true. Um, but, but it's just knowing that it's all part of the process of healing. And I think that's something that we don't talk about a lot. We go to therapy. When you go to therapy, that's why people always say, when you go to therapy, just like be prepared that it's going to probably get really ugly before it gets good. 
But mm. it getting ugly does not mean there's no good coming. It's just you're dealing with it. You're unraveling. Everything is coming to the surface. You're having to face certain things that you did not want to face, that you swept under the rug for so long, and now they're coming to the surface. Now you've got someone who's, who's making you deal with you, making you face you. It's not easy making us face one another. It's going to get ugly before it gets beautiful. And that's how it is with the Lord as well. The process of sanctification that's just how it is with the Lord as well. The process of him pruning us. He prunes us because we've born, like, not born, but we, he says he prunes those who bear fruit, right, so that we can bear more fruit. And that's how it is. So, um, you know, we, we went through that journey where the, 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 the therapist prayed for us and we felt like, damn, something was removed for us, um, from us. And then we came into another phase and we were butting heads. But that doesn't mean that we're going back into default, it just means we're being pruned. He's dealing with something. He's dealing with this. Tension. Okay, you, you, it's the ten, it's the tension of tension, growth. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think what I've been so appreciative of is uh, my sisters and and my brothers as well as my mom. Like without him even knowing, my mom in this in in behind the scenes is like, how are you guys doing? Are you showing? Oh, up? it's not that I don't know. You don't know that I know, but oh, I know. Oh, okay. You know, I don't need to has be your told. man eaten? <laughs> Did you make food? Did you cook? You know, you don't have to. Yes, we already know. I that's, should start calling mums up. Like, wow. you, we already know that that's not. Here's the thing as well. My family knows. We already know that that's not the woman you. You've never been that woman, and we know that that's not the woman you are. But at least for the sake of your, and we've got a nanny now, so that makes it even more better, but for your husband's sake, even if you're cooking twice in a week, you're the one who's cooking because we know you work and you and you love to work and you work hard. But just for your husband's sake, and it's it's called compromise. Yes, there's a nanny who can who can cook every day, but because your husband loves for you to cook as well, show up even if it's just twice in a week. He knows I'm gonna eat a meal that my my wife made. I mean, that, I like you cooking other things. I just you know that don't have to be twice a week. That could be like at least every once a day. Oh wow! You know, <laughs> yo, just father. Saying, yeah, but there's something else that I am least, improving in. Remember, hey, there's some things. Yeah, but at least it must occur at yeah. least once every day. Yeah, but wanna. anyway, what I was Not saying once every three what, weeks. What I was saying. <laughs> is that point of compromise is quite important. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes we believe, and I'll use the word, uh, you don't have to respond, I know you're going to have no, something to say, no, but we, we, and it's something I, I don't identify myself as, well, at least in that um, definition, but w we can want to be modern women so much that we forget the essentials of what makes our husbands happy. And it looks different for all of us. There's some households where the husband's like, you don't have to cook. That's not what, what I want. Maybe you can do this for me. That's what will make me feel appreciated. Uh, appreciated. Um, but yeah, it's just compromise, right? Um, I don't mind cooking, but we are in a phase in our lives where there's a lot that's picking up. There's, there's, I just feel a lot of the pressure, and it's good pressure, uh, but it doesn't mean I, I can't come out of that, even if it's twice in a week and cook for my husband. It doesn't mean I can't come out of that and, you know, do something else that I know that my husband would, 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 would be appreciative of. And so I really appreciate my sisters and my brothers and my mom and how she's been, you know, pouring into me wisdom. You know, um, that woman, I, I, yeah, I, I value her a lot. Um, yeah. So it's 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 just been a, a great journey to know yes. that they are there and and we can just and I mean, be like, ourselves. I mean, I like I, since this is the maintenance segment, I would say the one thing I'm also recognizing and appreciating is that the people around are not easy way out people. Ooh. Like if you Ooh. if you are going to try succeed in anything in life, basically, like I mean, our trainer. Rich, what up, Richard? Rich, what up, champ? What up, champ? Is like he'll give you the hardest workouts, and when people see our workers, they're like, What is it, World War Five coming or something <laughs> like that? But like, he'll give you the hardest. But the one thing I've learned about the body is that some workouts 
just doing it, not because I don't want to do it, but I can't even do it because yeah. my body's not used to that movement sure. and my muscles have never done that movement before. But even in that, that moment, intensity. yeah, mm-hmm. even in that moment, just even the movement, yeah. forget the intensity, okay. like the movement of it to yeah. do a move, to move. Like inside. me and my push ups. Yeah, like your body is not used to make doing that movement, but even when you do that movement and you suck at doing it and your push up literally is just. You know, it's not even a push-up. That's mine. <laughs> it's like I started there too. So then once your body is just used to this, tomorrow you can go a bit more. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, and, and but your body gets used to the movement. And I feel like the point I'm trying to make just ran away from me, but I'm going to bring it back anyway. Bring it so back, baby, because it's like, somewhere. It's like when you have people that make you go into spaces. No, not you. They, 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 they make you go into certain spaces. Now I'm going to be distracted now. All right, cool. What you try to do with Cindy? No, baby. You're not distracted. Talk. Carry on. Oh, so like in marriage also, like I'm not used to certain movements. Like my brain is not used to a certain level of thinking or my heart is not used to a certain level of emotion or my soul just ain't used to a certain kind of yeah. dimensional movement. And... If I was just like, no, it's too hard. Yeah. I could actually miss ever being able to experience how good it feels to do a push up. So, what you're saying is, we can do hard things. Yes. Essentially. You, you literally can yeah. do hard things. And hard things suck because the one thing I've learned in marriage is that doing the hard things and then seeing no fruit after doing hard things is also hard. Yeah. But then. Now you must tap into, I don't see fruit for doing hard things, but I'm so glad, and I know God is glad that I did the hard thing, but now it's harder for me because I ain't seen no fruit. Now Yet. you have to comprehend mm. doing hard things without actually bearing results in certain season because they may not be the, 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 the results may, be, may not be fruitful in that season, but maybe yeah. in a later season, it could bear fruit and it will bear fruit. So yeah, it's yeah. like, it's so, it's so wild that... You have to not, you can't have easy way out people you because can't. easy way out people, they will be like, nah, brah, you know, I, uh, she wilding, how could she, yeah, your wife trip, your wife run, how is she going to do? And then it's like, yeah, you validate the negative, the negative yeah. feeling that I already have because sure. I am disrespected. I am dishonored. I, I feel like she's disloyal. And she's unfaithful, not even because she went outside, but she's just, the treatment is not faithful. And when you go to somebody who's an easy way out, they validate everything that you're feeling. Absolutely. And they don't call you up. Yeah. You know? So it's... They just let you stay where you are and matter of fact, dig a deeper grave for yourself because tomorrow you got regret. Yeah. Yeah. So so essentially what what I'm getting from you, babe, is that um, we can do hard things. In fact... Uh, we are called to do hard things. Um, don't give up just because you're not seeing the fruit of your labor right now. Yeah. You might see the fruit in a different season. Maybe the fruit um, is seasoned for a different time, right? Yeah. Um, and also, it's important who we have around us. Mm-hmm. Um, the the guy a company. In the, Bible? the guy in the Bible? The one who Maybe there's so many guys so, in the Bible. So the one who married... Who worked for seven years for a wife? I like telling the story. You love telling that story. And then is he it had to not, work another seven years for the not, actual not, wife he it's wanted. It's not Isaac. It, it, that guy. Yeah, that one who the wife was Rachel and Leah. Yeah. If I'm and not that's, mistaken. That's, that's literally like the whole point. Yeah. Like, so if he had easy way out people he in quit. the first seven years, they would have been like, nah, that man tripping. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's go get him. Yeah, he would have quit. And so... It's important, man, to have people around you who will value your marriage, uh, who value marriage, but who are also not easy way out people, yeah. right? Um, mm-hmm. So I appreciate that on today's segment of... Maintenance! Maintenance. We seemed as though... Hey, what the heck? Yeah. Hey, uh, what um, people are going to say by Rumi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, monitor monitoring I, spinda- Fire! Hey, hey. Fire! But I, I, I. I saw that Rumi didn't show. I'm not not around you ever. Um, but but yeah, I know that we might have gone or been, you know, 
it seems like it was all over the place, but it wasn't. No, but it's our was first brilliant. maintenance um, segment, and I'm really mm. excited that we started. I'm happy that we started. I believe it's going to be really amazing. Mm. Uh, we are going to benefit from the segment, I believe, truly, truly, because we get to communicate and, and talk more than we usually mm. do. Um, yes, but I hope that this adds value to you. I hope that this is not just entertainment, but it's a value add. I hope that you're able to introspect. I hope that you're able to open yourself and give your heart permission uh, for God to um, grow capacity in you, to grow you, to, to help you evolve, um, and so that you can bring impact in, in, in your sphere of influence. Yeah. Um, we are really excited. We're appreciative. We are on our platform now. We had a comment the last time saying, uh, it puzzled me that you guys would oh. always be on other people's or other, create yeah, other creatives' platforms and bring great numbers for them. And we, we love appreciate that comment. Them. Yeah. We actually love We that love it because it was because pulling on like, our edges. We know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We calling knew it. people we knew up. It. Eh? You're calling us up and we yeah. appreciate it. So here we are. Please comment below. Let us know what stood out for you. Let us just engage with us, you know. Um, subscribe. That would be great. We see that there is a number of you who watch our content and are not subscribed. So please subscribe. It, it is free. And it, it's, it, it really helps us expand our reach. So in other words, you're partnering with us so that we can you know, expand our reach. Um, and also share this. You know, Take a clip. Share it on your Instagram. Tag us, please. I appreciate that because it, once again, expands our reach. Um, and we would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. So uh, we're not going to give a time frame, well, but we're going to be consistent. Um, that's I something that you can... I agree with you. Come on. We have to be connected. We have to be maintained. We have to be anything Let's give ourselves a month and let me see the consistency. Every week, it's no better in the screen. Please subscribe, share the comments, yeah, thank, like, thank and you do for the that things. side eye. No, 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 no. Shapa I want to keep consistent, so I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. Not going to show. Well, okay. wonder when you say things, you have to do them. You got to be a woman of your world. Ah. Like if you say it, you got to do it. I love you guys so much. Uh, see you on the next segment. We are back. You still remember? We are back. Let's do it. Ah. Uh.